Right there. Hi, Glenn. Uh -oh. I'm getting in there right now. Trying to, anyway. Hello, you're Pat. We got, we hear you, Pat. Get out of there, Moscow. What's going on? You. Yeah. What's going on in the seventies? Pat, we were saying we could hear you. Pat, we were saying we could hear you. There you go. There you go. Take a seat. <laughs> Wave at everybody, Pat. <laughs> Kevin, do you have the sound up for her? Kevin, she, they don't seem to be able to hear us. They don't seem to be able to hear us. I can hear you. Oh, you can hear us. Good. Well, we were talking about you. You have a crown oh. on your head. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you tilt your screen down a little bit, we'd see more of you and less of the crown. There you go. How's that? Oh, now you're dark. Now you're in the dark. <laughs> you're still a little dark. <laughs> I want to be able to see you. <laughs> All right, we're going to... Kevin's going to mute you, and then we'll start the meeting, okay? Okay. All right. Kevin, you're in control. In Philip's book. All right, I'd like to go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, today is our 73rd meeting. 
How about that? That's mm. interesting. Again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we have a, a fairly short agenda today, so we'll move along very quickly. We have also with us Pat Walker. She'll be uh, joining us virtually um, here in a few. So thank you for joining us, Pat. Um, we've checked video and audio. We see you and I uh, think we can hear you as well. So thank you for joining us. Um, before you, you have an agenda. I'll need a, a motion to a, approve the agenda as you were presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. A, a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Also in your packet was the minutes for the 20, uh, August 27, 2020 meeting. If there is no errors or omissions, please uh, uh, we'll entertain a motion to adopt those as well. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, that motion is carried as well. And now we're moving on to item number five, which is old business. Um, we're going to have uh, information on the Vietnam Visitor Center. And today we have Pat Walker, who's joining us virtually for a report on fundraising and the Visitor Center. So, Pat, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mike. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay, well, as everybody knows, all the fundraising activities have been canceled since March because of the COVID. Um, so we decided we would go ahead and introduce the banner program with a way of continuing to raise some funds until we can get back to our usual fundraising. Um, these banners are a military tribute, which would be placed at the Memorial Gardens. They, I don't know, did you get a copy, Glenn, of the actual banner? They're, they're looking at it now, ma'am. Okay. Um, these banners honor your military hero with, with his picture, some information about him. Um, they're, they're very good size. They're 24 <clears throat> by 48. They are printed on a material that withstands the weather. They are $200 a piece for the general public. Any veteran can be displayed. Um, and as I had spoken with Glenn earlier, if he's Vietnam, we will place it at the Vietnam Memorial. If he is Beirut, it can be placed at the Beirut Memorial on holidays and special occasions. So this is something that on the reverse side of this banner, um, it tells about Jacksonville and one city. So we're proud of it. We hope a lot of people will take advantage of it. And the, you have the information. There is a place if you need to order one or want more information, you can give me a call. Uh, phone number 910-545-9333. Always available for any information that you might need additional. Uh, I'd like to leave some, band, some of the flyers at City Hall when I'm out next time so they can be just picked up and follow the instructions. Um, as Rees Across America, this is going to be a bad year, I'm afraid. We right now have a little over a thousand reads on hold with over 5,000 veteran graves. That's not a very good outlook for December. So we're still pushing that. We're hoping to get some of the schools involved like we did last year, which we talked to Pam Thomas about and just keep doing what we can until this pandemic is over. Pat, I have a question for you. You said you have a thousand of the 5,000 you need. Correct. And is that due to the lack of fundraising? Yes, it is. 
What what's the deficit? Well, there's about 5,500 veterans' graves. So you take 1,000 away, we're 4,500 no, I mean short in, at the moment. In but we still, we still have until December 1st. Right. What's the dollar amount that you need? Uh, the dollar amount runs somewhere around $88,000 to cover the cemetery. The whole thing? Yes. And we did that the last two years, but I got a feeling this year we're going to be short. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to try and answer them. Well, thank you for the update. And um, uh, this is being televised. So if, if anyone is interested in the banner program, they can contact you and when you're able to get some of the flyers, uh, let us know and we'll help you try to distribute those to get more um, publicity uh, for you. That would be a great help. Thank you, Mike. Well, thank you again and thank you for joining us. Any questions for Pat? I have a comment. Uh, I happened to be up in uh, Colonial Heights, Virginia last week and they have the banners and they look fantastic. I don't know how long they've been up, but they they held up, they hold up good. But it, what a great way to honor local service members. When I saw that, I wanted to bring that back to Jacksonville. So I'm so excited to hear that Pat's already jumped on that. I think it would be fantastic for a community that prides ourselves on our military. Absolutely. It's just, and you go down the street and each one is different. You see a different person uh, being memorialized up there on the pole. It's, it, boy, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. It's great. Any other comments? No. No, not Chris. Pat, thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Okay, next order of business is going to be a capital projects update. Anna? Hi. Good afternoon. It's been quite some time since I've had the privilege of presenting an update. Um, and so today we're going to actually talk about um, Sturgeon City. Um, as you know, they've been in operation a little over almost a year and a half now. Um, after they've been in operation, they have had feedback from those who have participated in their events. And they were requesting some additional enhancements. Um, and those enhancements, again, were coming from the participants, management, and operations. And you might recall that I had previously discussed some of these enhancements with you in January, and those enhancements consisted of both interior and exterior. So on the interior enhancements, they were looking for additional electrical outlets in the classrooms. Um, they were also looking for the addition of an electronic ADA, um, um, motorized ADA compliant door. We, you had given us permission along with the city council to proceed forward with design. We bid that out and unfortunately we did not receive any bids. And so we will be receive, we will be re-advertising this project in October. Um, and so again, you have already given us permission to fully go through with, with construction and installation. On the exterior enhancements, this is where we needed a little bit more information before we could proceed forward. So the three items that they were that Sturgeon City Nonprofit was interested in pursuing were access to the park. So as you know, Sturgeon City, the Environmental Education Center and their admin building is directly next to the park. And unfortunately, they didn't have a direct connection at this time. And so we wanted to pursue what would that connection look like. Also, they wanted they were concerned about safety barriers. Now we have kids that are now exposed to the site. As you know, this used to be an industrial wastewater treatment plant. And so there's additional safety measures that they were concerned with. And lastly, parking. Um, I think most of you have had the opportunity to be out there and it's um, heavily utilized in the evening. And so people just tend to park where they can. And we wanna see if we can maybe organize that a little bit better. What makes this a little bit more complicated is, is this site from a, a stormwater perspective. It's not your typical. It, it has actually four drainage basins. And so looking at opportunities for improvement is further complicated because we want to keep our costs low. And so looking at access to the park, this was a, a discussion that we've had with the nonprofit. Currently, as you can see what the proposed building is, they would exit the rear of the building and go behind the clarifiers, which is the bottom yellow piece. And then they would walk to an existing asphalt driveway and um, let's see, 
right where um, the little, the, uh, bet anyway, between the building, there's an exterior bathroom there, and then they would have direct connection by adding a little bit of an eight foot sidewalk towards the park. There is a fence there now that is gated. That fence would be removed and we would actually relocate it. Um, for the safety barriers, that fence that I just mentioned is that blue line that was, that's next to the sidewalk connection to the park. The other blue line that's to the south is another gate and that would um, prohibit vehicles from driving down the drying, the drying bed area. And the purple, those are bollards. So um, we are looking at putting bollards with the middle ones being removable. Um, and that way, when kids are going from one building to the next, meaning the admin building to the, the civic and environmental area, that the kids can play and not have to worry about vehicles traveling in and around that area. So those are the safety barriers that we have looked at. So parking was the main issue, I guess the main concern, and also the most, the one that's gonna cost the most. And so we tagged our design team to evaluate the entire site and to say, let's look at what's the most cost benefit. We don't wanna construct another BMP. We already have one that's out there. Um, we have one that is um, permitted and one that's uh, a buyer retention facility. And we wanted to make sure, what can we do? Let's be creative in how we can address some of this parking. So what I'm showing now for you tonight or this afternoon are two areas that we considered. And along with that, we said, how many parking spaces make sense? And so from a starting point, we were trying to get about 50 additional parking spaces. So the two areas that we are interested in potentially moving forward are include the, the area that is just north of the existing garage, that's the larger green circle. And the benefit of this, it actually utilizes the existing impervious surface area. So that coupled with the new impervious surface area will still be within the available capacity of the permit for the stormwater BMP that's north of that green circle. And then the second area is um, an area that is close to some existing parking um, that also falls into the other BMP that um, again has a, a enough impervious surface area. So this is the area that we were just mentioning, which is north of the garage. So this area, again, we're reutilizing existing asphalt. Um, we're adding some additional parking spaces. You'll see we've got landscaping, which is required by the city's UDO. The handicapped parking spaces that are located there are actually gonna be moved and we're gonna take them and, and add them to in front of the building. So there won't be any handicapped spaces there. And we're also adding a sidewalk connection from the new 48 spaces directly to the facility, not in the location that's shown, but that's the concept. So this area or this option gives us 48 parking spaces. And then the other area that we looked at was um, adding additional 10 spaces. And this is the drive as you're heading towards the admin building. You probably have parked here, it's all grass. Um, and right where that red line is, where that rectangle, those are the existing parking spaces. So it kind of makes sense to just kind of nudge these 10 parking spaces over there. And then obviously, if we're gonna go through the expense of adding parking, we need to make sure that people aren't still aren't parking wherever they want to park. And so the concept would be to add something similar to this type of knee-high fencing option, just to delineate traffic a little bit better. So we're proposing in the red areas that might be some type of a fencing, and then um, in the, um, as, you, as you exit the building and you're on Loyola, as you're going north, do you see where the driveway connection is? There's a little opening there. That's a big open field. So that's gonna serve as our overflow parking. In the event all the other parking spaces are full, they are still more room for them to park. As long as we don't dedicate it as an overflow parking area, we don't have to worry about permitting, it, et cetera. So the rough estimate for construction for the items presented um, is approximately $200,000. This budget amount is within the, uh, the residual bond funds that are remaining from this project. And I, um, again, I've already talked to the Surgeon City Board. They're recommending approval to move forward with what we've discussed this afternoon. Today, I'm seeking your recommendation to move forward. And if you are in agreement, my next plan of action is to seek the city council's approval for their 
um, recommendation also. If all parties agree, then we'll move forward through design and then construction. And that concludes my presentation and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Deanna. Any questions? The 48 additional and the 10, is that part of the proposal? To yes. make it 58 additional? Yes, yes, sir. If nobody has any other questions, I am willing to make a motion to proceed. And I second. Have a motion and a second. second. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Deanna, thank you for your hard work. Great improvements. <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, Teresa, Tourism Development Fund, talk about FY21 work. Is that hashtag 21? <laughs> So we will um, just give you a quick update. You guys are um, a lot of events were canceled, unfortunately, yeah. for all the reasons we're all familiar with. Um, the couple of events that we have done, some of the races went virtual. Scott will cover his, and uh, one of the ones that you guys help is the um, Marine Corps Half Marathon. They decided this year, obviously, going virtual, they wanted to um, do something to honor the veterans, or the heroes, rather. And so they put out the Heroes Mile in the um, gardens. And I can tell you, I drove by and saw quite a few people there. They promoted it, and we promoted it on social media so that people knew it was there when they were doing the race. And um, here's just a couple of shots. We had a lot of great comments that people appreciated seeing it, were moved by it as always. And even though the numbers were down, they still had probably a little bit over a third of the amount that they normally have that ran it virtually. And a lot of comments looking forward to next year's race. <clears throat> Oktoberfest, like everybody's had to dial way back on what they're doing. They're not gonna have their big festival with the big crowd invite, they're doing a um, two days of takeaway food, German food, at their new facility, uh, the new building on Hargett Street. So this will give them opportunity to uh, invite the media. They'll get some media coverage and invite people to uh, see the building and make donations to the uh, homeless shelter. So the food they're gonna sell, uh, they're prepared to sell 2,000 uh, meals um, on the front end, and they're hoping to pre-sell a bunch so that they can up that number. The Fashion Week, FTM Fashion Week, is going to proceed on. They are at the Hilton Garden Inn. That is November 20th and 21st. She, um, they will be doing everything that they're supposed to do for social distance, and um, she, they do a fabulous job fundraising throughout the year so they can still fund this event, and uh, that, this is one of the celebrity hosts they're going to have. They have another uh, national celebrity coming in. Kiki White is her name. She's national. Um, she's an R&B singer and a reality star, so she'll do well promoting that for them. Veterans Tribute Weekend. Uh, same story. I know you're tired of hearing it. We um, are going to still do the tours of Lejeune Memorial Gardens that we um, had a few people do last year, and they really enjoyed that, so we want to offer that. And we decided to add in, much like the Heroes Mile, a Veterans Walk of Honor. And what we're going to do is, through our media partners, to help promote the weekend and not lose any of our traction, we're going to um, have people nominate a veteran and we'll cut it off at 100. We start that October 1st. We're running it for three weeks. If it takes three weeks, which I don't think it will, and we will put those out and let people promote it and let people um, take the tour of that. And then Wednesday, of course, will be the Veterans Day ceremony. They'll, I'm sure they'll still do that at the um, DAV. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked to you guys, uh, Glenn sent out emails, I think, about Visit NC, had a, um, a, a grant 
if you will, I guess. And um, this is no cost to us. They, uh, we were awarded $50,000 in credit and the county was awarded a hundred thousand. So Salem and I and Susan worked together to put these, uh, coordinate some buys together and do some things, uh, not duplicating some things. <clears throat> and just to make the note of it, so the Gail mm -hmm. was, had to get this, we don't actually get $50,000. We just no. get a, we just get to buy that much and play money mm -hmm. um, out there. Um, <laughs> other, other money there so. Credit, credit. Yeah. But it's still promotion, it's so. Game, yeah. yeah, but it's promotion money, so we'll take it. Um, so a couple of the buys that we are doing is, um, we're doing the digital program with AARP and promoting our waterways and our climate and that sort of thing to that audience. Large market combo is a print um, placement in five different markets, two of them in Ohio, one in Philly and Richmond. So uh, we really felt like that could benefit us. And then the Cox Premium Digital um, program is uh, Cox Cable. You can pick, I think, up to four markets and um, Salem is due in November and we'll do December. So we'll kind of piggyback those and, and get some more frequency and um, some awareness there for our community and everything we have to offer. We are hosting this week um, a national uh, travel writer, Matt Meltzer. Um, he's here, we're exiting out here pretty quick. He was um, a Marine here right after 9-11. So it's interesting, I'll be interested to see what he says after the tour and how everything has changed here, but he's particularly interested in our ethnic cuisine and uh, what experiences he can, um, the community has to offer him that he wasn't aware of. And Montford Point story is, seems to be his hot button. Last night, uh, they went at, he went out and Kim went out and took some photos on bayonet cruises. And this is a screen grab of some of his Instagram story from this morning. Glenn took him to the gardens for a quick tour yesterday. <clears throat> and then he had some time on his own. And then one of the shots is from Bayonet. Great update. Thank you. Any questions for Teresa? So when you say we get $50,000 worth of credit, that helps our budget, correct? <clears throat> well, we would, some of that we would not have spent. Um, uh, you know, this, this is, um, this is, this was new money and it was intended to say that you're, you, they want you to spend it on, we're open and we can receive guests. And that's kind of the theme of it as well. So you have to be very careful what you're, what you're promoting there. So that it was in, that's the intended purpose. If you'll recall, the legislature gave the nonprofit that runs Visit NC $7 million to advance tour, travel and tourism in North Carolina. And that has to be spent by December. Those buys are from that, October through December. We were waiting to see if there would, might be any changes in it from some of the governor's, you know, executive orders and things like that. But at this time, they're still holding to that deadline. Any other questions? I don't have any other questions. Teresa, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Good work. All right, Paula, we're going to get a Sturgeon City update. Hello, thank you so much for um, having me today. Thank Just going to give you guys a very brief update. Um, as you may remember, um, last time I was before you guys, I mentioned that um, we would be launching a program for the students on their virtual learning days. So we do have a total of 30 students um, participating in that program, you know, in, in groups of 15, all 30 on Wednesdays. Of course, we'll continue to shift that now that um, K through five is going to start phasing back into school. Mm -hmm. um, we've also been working to develop new kind of special programs because obviously a lot of our main wheelhouse with field trips and things are not functioning, at least for now, for this school year. Um, so we've developed kind of some specialty weekend programs um, for the students that are doing pretty well, um, including launching our Teen Science Cafe, which we've been working on for a couple of years. We had 35 students participate in that last Friday. Um, and then we have a Just Dance program we've been doing where we play, if you're familiar, it's like you play YouTube videos and the kids get to dance along watching the dancers, but we add in science lessons like talking about exercise health and lung capacity, things like that. And then um, also doing a kids bingo night um, with science themed bingo um, and having the kids come participate in those. So um, also launching back into our mobile planetarium shows um, and getting those back up and running as well. 
Um, and then as with everyone else, <laughs> we've been continuing to adjust um, you know, events and functions as needed. So people pretty much kind of keep pushing back and pushing back. We're sort of going one month at a time as these executive orders at the state level continue to change, you know, we'll do our best to accommodate folks and um, hopefully um, have what we can have here. And um, we do, I did want to show you something we've been working on. Um, we actually have been developing, you might remember that a few years ago, we purchased some signage, educational signage that's along the boardwalk and into Sturgeon City Park and on the Sturgeon City site. And we have developed a brochure, kind of a walking tour brochure that actually goes with those signs. Um, this is still in progress. We're actually making some updates to help it flow a little bit better. We've gotten some feedback from some of our local partners that actually walk daily um, down in this area. And so we're grateful for that, that we're gonna be continuing to um, adjust this and update it to make it more user friendly. But it's something nice for people that we can um, give out. It's gonna be available on our website. So even if someone comes down and might not get a tour with one of our staff, they can still walk around the site and learn some things about our story and about the different wildlife that they might observe while visiting. Um, so we're hopeful this will help folks continue to enjoy the site and the property um, while they're there. Cause we know a lot of folks have been coming out to get outside um, during the pandemic with other things being closed. Um, and really that's pretty much all I have to update you guys on short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Um, how, how was your occupancy for the for the remainder of the year? Um, I mean, we have a few things still booked. A lot of folks have gone ahead and been contacting us to push back. Okay. Um, you know, the general vibe, which is even if allowed, you know, some people might not feel comfortable attending and a few events are kind of fundraising related. And so they want to wait because they need to get, you know, large enough capacity in their events to, um, to make it worth their while. So. Like I said, we're just kind of going one month at a time and calling folks as we know the new orders and things like that and um, trying to accommodate. So we're hopeful that things will start to pick back up, you know, pretty much hopefully first of next year, a little bit. Well, thank you. Thank you for that update. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Um, Jacksonville. Mr. Chairman, yes. Before we go, Paula, I'm sorry. Paula. Yes. Thank you, uh, Paula. Uh, great job again uh, with the COVID circumstance, I understand. But as far as social functioning, Yes. Um, in view of the fact that there are holidays coming up. Yes. Uh, and it's very popular for groups to yes. set social functions. Have there been any that's been set at Sturgeon City that have not been pushed back? Um, we have a couple things still tentatively on the calendar in December. Um, a couple of folks have gone ahead and pushed back. Um, a couple of them were like private, more company type holiday functions. Um, and many have still had employees working from home and things like that. So I don't feel that it might be appropriate, you know, to mm -hmm. suddenly have them all back for a party. Um, but we do have a couple still looking at December um, and on the books. So we're hopeful again, um, a couple have tentatively pushed back into like January or February, um, you know, to kind of do a belated, um, right. you know, holiday celebration just to try to give it some more time. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. All right, next we have uh, a report by uh, Scott Smith for the Jacksonville Alonzo Sports Commission. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, if you guys remember a couple of years ago, this group talked about uh, making a focus, the, the water and the waterways and fishing and boating and those sort of things. And that's when we started New River Splash. But we also went out and bid on and recruited uh, an event called Fishers of Men. It's a, a national tournament trail. Uh, they were here. The actual event was September 11th and 12th, but as you know, those guys come in early to spot out and go out and find where they want to fish. So typically they have as many as 75 boats for an event. So we were really excited. We had 11 boats. Now, that was disappointing. Uh, but because they come in so early, I'll share some numbers with you. It's still a good event. Part of that is, thanks again, 2020. Uh, part of that was some concern about bass fishing in this area. As you know, we're a little more known for trout fishing. But you can see a couple of pictures here. They, they had the event down at the Jacksonville Landing. They bragged about our community, about our hotels and the hospitality. They loved the site. They loved everything that, you know, they said we were very hospitable. Uh, compared to some of the things they're used to. So uh, they were a great group of, of folks, but we just didn't have as, as many boats as we had hoped for. Uh, they caught some, some nice fish. So 
because they came in early, the estimated economic impact for the event was almost uh, $27,500, and it was about 110 room nights. So uh, again, nice for our community, especially during this time. Uh, the other thing, they felt bad about the number of boats. And so, whoops, so they, uh, they reduced our remaining bid fee, which was very helpful. And I don't know the, the, the impact this will have on us, but they're giving us six months of banner ads on their website and on four social media platforms. Uh, they typically would charge about $3,500 for that. They're throwing that in because they felt bad that we only had 11 boats. So again, we'll, we'll, we'll decide in the future if, if that's worth uh, looking at again. Okay. Did they say they would be back? They're interested in doing that. And something else that they were looking at previous to this was putting really together basically an advertising package. And the tournament is almost a bonus, if that makes any sense. You, you feel like you're getting your value for what you're choosing. And then whether you have 10 boats or 75 boats, that's almost in addition to. Uh, I, I think because every city has such varying numbers that they run into this a lot. Somebody's expecting one thing, get another, or they're thinking it's going to be smaller and they have a lot more and maybe they weren't prepared for it. So we'll, we'll see as they kind of work that out as well. Uh, I apologize if I've told you some of this. As I said at our board meeting this morning with all the groups that we meet with, I can't remember who I've told what. Um, <laughs> Cycle and Sea was supposed to end their mountains to coast ride here at Topsail Beach uh, October 10th their board decided to cancel that cycling event. So we do not have that. Our Beat the Bridge race, uh, as Teresa mentioned, is one that we took virtual, uh, is currently active. I think we're going to extend it just a little bit. I think they're going to have till about October 15th to complete that. Uh, that's our Marine Chevy Beat the Bridge, which also benefits Semper Fi Fund. One that I'm excited, we are having our Freddy's Frozen Custard Challenge in person on October 17th to follow the, the social distancing guidelines. It'll be corral starts of 25 people every 10 minutes. It'll be many water bottles instead of cups of water. Instead of custard cones, it's prepackaged custard ice cream sandwiches. And uh, FCA is a partner on that event, and they're really pushing to help. Um, these teams and coaches that aren't doing anything right now are looking for some activities to get together and go do something. So they're pushing this as a way to do that. And then the last thing I'll mention, again, piggybacking on Teresa, typically with Oktoberfest, uh, there's been a softball tournament. Well, with the guidelines and everything now, it, it appears that is not happening uh, just because of the requirements and the regulations. And so uh, I've been here three years. But because of 2020, this feels like my 73rd TDA <laughs> meeting. And so hopefully in 2021, we'll have all of this cooking and then some. Any questions? Great report. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Thank you. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'll just give a real quick uh, update. I keep forgetting to give slides, so <laughs> I need to remember to do that at my next one. So um, so first off, our uh, photo shoot that was originally scheduled for May has been rescheduled. It is going to be October 3rd and 4th. Uh, for that photo shoot, we're going to be doing it with Visit NC, the State Tourism Office. We're going to be featuring Mike's Farm, um, Bear Island, and also uh, one of the restaurants down in Swansboro, since it's just kind of a day photo shoot. Um, and then we also have rescheduled one of our travel riders from the spring. They are going to be here October 6th through the 10th. They have booked their plane tickets, so we're very excited. They should be coming. Um, so we'll be taking them all over the county for about four days. So we're really excited about that. Um, as Teresa mentioned earlier, uh, Visit NC, the State Tourism Office, did give us a marketing credit of $100,000. Um, and so one of the ones we are doing, as she said, is Cox TV. 
Um, we're actually running that in October and we are featuring it in five different states. We're also doing mobile media marketing with that one as a chance to drive people to our website uh, so that they can see all the great things that we have to do that are also safe for people to participate in. Um, and then we're also doing a uh, garden and gun. We're doing a digital campaign with them through that marketing credit. Um, and also just so you know too, Swansboro TDA also received the marketing grant. I did talk to them. So they did receive some credits through the state also. And we were actually able to apply for an additional grant through uh, visitancy and through the state to be uh, for $10,000. So we're waiting to see if we receive approval for that. And that's money we actually can spend uh, ourselves and choose what project we want to use towards. So hopefully we'll hear about that in the next week or so. Um, and then the other big thing is, is the beaches have been doing fairly well. And I think occupancy has done fairly well through the summer. So we've been excited about that. And we're also gonna continue to push our outdoor and safe activities talking about our fall events. Um, as the state keeps coming out with new regulations, we're kind of having to stay on our toes to make sure we're marketing uh, the correct regulations that are going on. But as I said, at the next meeting, I should be able to show you some of the videos that we've done through the marketing credit and some photos from our travel writers. So if well, anyone has any you. questions. Any questions? We, we do significantly collaborate on things, as you heard, on the buy, so they're very coordinated and timing is everything, as you know. Yes. Um, thank you for thank your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Glenn, is Gail going to join us? Oh, I'm just I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow, you've been so blinded right in right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my fault. I'm here. Gail, the floor is yours. <laughs> Give us some good news. Actually, it is pretty good news. Um, if you'll take a look at this chart, you'll see FY21 right now is the second highest year that we've had since 2011. Um, it, we're at 228,000 for the year so far. That's only two months, but and you'll notice, you know, 20 was an uh, extremely good year, and we're back to more than FY19 was. So. Little luck tick. Going well here. And this compares the rolling 12 months here. And as it indicates, April was the worst ever since we started collecting uh, tax. <laughs> and then... Um, I know. I agree. Um, <laughs> we have picked back up. Yay. Um, we're still not to last year's numbers, but last year was um, extremely high. And then this just breaks it down by the areas which... They're all down from last year, except the online. And we're down like 19% from last year, but still back to the to the year prior to. So it's all looking good, I think. It does look very good. Um, <clears throat> I think we're very fortunate. I'm amazed that we have yeah. that, that level. Really. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, especially when you consider how much has changed. Yeah. And, I mean, all the activities that are gone and non-existent and movement of people is diminished. So, again, yeah, good news. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Congratulations on becoming a grandfather. Thank you. Yeah. Get that pocketbook ready. Um, thank you, Gail. Um, staff comments? Uh, Glenn? Glenn? I want to mention a couple things. First of all, officially today, um, the release is being made that the Beirut observance is going to be virtual. I mean, I think it's really, unfortunately, not a surprise to anyone, but there had been a lot of efforts to try to keep it so that the, particularly the Gold Star families could be there. General Gray had accepted an invitation to speak. Um, and now it will be a, a ceremony somewhat scaled down, but it will still have the wreath laying and addresses and the 8th Marine Regiment will definitely be participating, which, as you know, is the ones that lost the most in that in, in the Beirut bombing. And um, it will be like that. We're, we're going to stream it live. Um, the veterans, um, one of the unfortunate parts is the veterans, um, better, the Beirut Veterans of America, um, they're actually looking at either canceling their uh, activities or scaling back also because they don't want to expose those people to problems as it was. 
Um, and so that was several hotels um, that they were going to be using during that time, too. So that's the other part of it. I think that we've seen in some of the numbers there what base and Rick is much more prepared to speak about this or eloquently can do so with his knowledge. We're seeing what base travel looks like. What what the, what is a what is a level of you know just tr business travel, construction, anything like that? Because we know we've had some construction. I've talked to some people that have, um, particularly the mid tiers, have seen some of the supervisors and the people that are here early for that. Um, we haven't even hit the peak of the construction aboard the base, but we are seeing some of the activities, particularly for the design build and some activities such as that as it was. The um, power of story, as you heard um, Salem mention, you've got to keep telling this about that, that Jacksonville and Onslow County welcome visitors, and as long as we can do so safely. But you have to get that interest out there as it was. And so when these, this effort to bring in travel riders is not necessarily to produce something that's going to be immediate. It's to plant that seed. We know when we did the story series on the Monford Point Marines, it produced a bump later as people were reacting to that and wanted to see things and do things. And that's what we're seeing now, is we're seeing things that happen with it. The fishing tournament you know, gives us an opportunity to talk about that we do have competitive fishing here and that we do have guides that are, they're making their living um, taking people on the river and fishing as it was. So I think these are the things that we can continue to do in a way that's not a big crowd. I mean, Oktoberfest, National Night Out, keep going, the list is, goes on. You know, things that we've had to change is where it is. I also think the power of how this community treats. Remember, you this, this authority adopted the Receive a Hero's Welcome. And so we try to live that out by the actions that we take for you. So putting those signs out, the staff did that right after the 9-11 observ observance that day in this room and put out the signs. And we were immediately greeted by people who were very appreciative of seeing that hero's mile on that. And when we took them back up that Monday, one of the young women who were there as part of the grounds crew had been a Marine here herself and had also recognized someone who was honored that she, when she in service, she actually replaced that Marine who was one of the tributes made in the signs. That was a very emotional moment and a very powerful moment at that time. But now we'll be doing that with the, the um, Walk of Honor with veterans for Veterans Tribute Weekend. We felt strongly that we needed to continue to fly the flag for the Veterans Tribute Weekend. Because while this year is gonna be scaled back, no parade, those things like that as it is, you, you, we, we need to say we're doing something, that we're, we're out there so that next year, <laughs> and we wanna get past this year, next year we can do something. And that'll be even more on that deal. Toward the end of this year, this was the year we all thought the census would be a big deal and out there. And, Right now, we just have but seven days to finish the census, and um, it, uh, it will be an interesting time. We know that some of it's been hard to count, and uh, it's out there, but we do ask if you'd ask your staff, the people you know that you walk around, did you fill it out? Because unfortunately, that's what we found, that uh, some people just didn't do it. We were shocked here in City Hall to find out how many hadn't filled it out, but we have been trying to push them on that matter. So that participation is what we want to ask for as it was. And they can do so by just going online and just filling it out, or they can call the number and they'll walk you through it for that time as it was there too. <clears throat> so for our one city moment, we did want to tell you about the MIA POW ceremony that was here in this room last Friday evening. Um, it was, it was um, very um, moving and they were very appreciative of us allowing them to continue their tradition of having this day, but they couldn't do it out there at the site. So this was something that allowed this to be done virtually, and um, we, we did so. You'll recognize some of you that fire bell there because we repurposed that from the 9-11 ceremony. But um, it, was, it, was, it was good to see that. Guy Hunter is a, is a POW from the, um, Gulf, the second Gulf War, and he spoke about his capture and about the time that he spent there. And of course, the missing man table that is out there as it was. And then they had a, a, a fire ceremony outside, and um, this was all very good out there as it was. And that, sir, is what we have for you today. Thank you, Glenn. Good work. Uh, thank you for making adjustments uh, as best you can. Um, it is well noted, so thank you again. Um, directors, any comments before we close? 
Glenn, just one uh, comment. Uh, um, well, not really a comment. Last meeting, I think you uh, indicated to us about the census. Yes, sir. There was about 90,800 Onslow County citizens that weren't accounted for. And then I think you went on to say about 37,000 Jacksonville residents. Yes, sir. And you gave us a figure of an estimated $1.7 billion in federal funding that would be lost. Right. I hope those numbers have improved, <laughs> and perhaps can you, if you know, yes. can you they, share with us? Yeah, they're in the what? 60s now um, okay. on self-response, and then the the um, the state, the Census Bureau is reporting for the state that they're about 90% count, 91% counted, every, that they've touched their households at least. Okay. Um, so if you conservatively look at that, we're at about, about somewhere around eight eight hundred million dollars that we would lose right now based on what we think the pop estimated population is for the county and for the city as it was and of course there's still time what they're doing is they continue to knock on the doors they're finding people that don't respond to door knocks mm -hmm. and so they're having to do a lot of interpolating and what's out there um, unfortunately when they do that that doesn't count for redistricting it will eventually count for the census but for redistricting you have to use pure empirical numbers and um, That'll be an interesting thing to see what happens. Any hopes, Glenn, of a further extension? Well, you do know that a, one court has um, has ordered that, uh, but there doesn't seem to be any others following along. So at this point, um, we've been told that, um, in fact, the census worker that was assigned to help us with our complete count committee, her last day is Friday. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Yes, Thank sir. You. Any other comments? No? Any comments? Um, very briefly, I had the uh, privilege of attending the, the Sports Commission uh, board meeting this morning. Uh, they asked me to come and give an update on the visitor center and the multi-purpose uh, complex, and I did so, and uh, it was a very good meeting. Thank you, Scott, for having me this morning. I hope we brought everyone up to speed as we continue to work on those uh, projects. Um, Again, it's at the staff level now, and we'll continue to keep you updated. So uh, no further uh, news from me. Thank you, and thank you for having us today. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.